very warm welcome to all the learners who wish to pursue a career in the very dynamic tourism industry. Now the session today is very important because it highlights the most difficult challenge that tourism faces in terms of marketing and promotion. The tourists come from a very different geographic location than the place that they visit. So it is paramount that the destination promotes itself right where the tourists come from. And that is how began the concept of the Festival of India, an event which is a celebration of India's culture in foreign countries, highlighting not just the ancient historic culture that India has inherited, but also the modern and contemporary issues related with the huge country like ours. We will also see in this session the logic of why this event is organized and why it is important that this event, because of the huge budget involved, must give results. We will also look at the planning and organization, how the entire concept took birth, how it is managed, how it is organized, because the sheer dynamics of this particular event makes it a huge challenge for the organizers. We will also see the achievements in terms of what the festival has done for our country, how it has brought in front of the world a picture that was initially not the picture of India that the people had, and how the festival has encouraged foreigners to visit our country. But it is also important that we understand the limitations of organizing a festival like this. So let us begin the session and let us see the main objectives of the session. We will understand the logic behind organizing festivals of India in foreign countries. We will also be informed about how the festival began and what its journey has been right from the post-independent India. The festival began in 1947 and how it is today in the year 2019. We will also look at the structure, the planning and organization of the festival how it is done, what are the various features which are integral to organizing a festival of this scale. We will look at again the challenges that the festival has been facing right from its inception through the current period. And we will also see how a festival like this has helped to promote inbound tourism to India, popularizing India as a tourist destination in the eyes of the foreigners and making us proud of our heritage and culture. Now, India is a huge subcontinent or it's a part of a subcontinent which is by and large a very unique culture with a very different civilization from that in any other part of the world. Now because the history of India had been written mostly by foreigners, mostly by the Britishers to be precise, the country has been receiving a very contrasting perception than what actually lies in the nation. It is very important to change the perception which is very contrary to the reality so that people can understand the richness of our culture and the vast heritage that we have and not only the ancient cultures that we have inherited, how India in the modern world is though transiting from its ancient cultures has still kept alive its heritage. So we will see the cultural heritage, how it has been looking at the various stages, the evolution of Indian cultural heritage. We will also see how festivals of India has made people or the tourists aware of our rich heritage. Especially these festivals have been organized in tourist generating countries, the countries from where maximum tourists undertake travel to foreign countries. So India in its effort has always concentrated its marketing effort and promotion in these tourist generating countries and how definitely a festival of this nature has given results to our country in terms of increasing tourism to the country. And of course, the best way to present India as a tourist receiving country, as a destination which is unique, as a destination which has lots to offer is through the festivals of India. 
Now let us see how the festival began, how it was conceived, what the background of the festival of India has been. Now it was immediately after India gained independence, that was in the year 1947-48, that the first ever exhibition of India was held in Britain. To be precise, it was held in the Burlington House, London, where Indian antiquities were exhibited in front of the Britishers. Now this exhibition was a huge success because the Britishers came in large numbers to look at the antiquities displayed at the exhibition. But then the exhibition saw a gap of around 30 years. But the idea of organizing this kind of exhibition was always there between the two governments. In 1978, it was the British government who made an effort and proposed to hold an exhibition of Indian classical art in London. So in 1980, the then Prime Minister of India, Mrs. Indira Gandhi, participated in a dialogue with the Britishers and she said that it is not enough to showcase just the rich heritage of India, but it is important that the event of this nature should definitely display our past, but it should also take into consideration the contemporary aspect and thus took shape the festivals of India. So after much deliberations, planning and coordinating, finally, in 1982, the first successful event was held in Britain revolving around the theme continuity and change. Continuity to highlight the dynamics of the continuing nature of our heritage, of our traditions, of our values, which is ingrained in every Indian, but at the same time change to show how India has also accepted modernization and how it is looking forward to technical advancements and the other developments that are taking place world over. In the same year, that is 1982, Mrs. Indira Gandhi visited USA, where she met President Reagan. In the dialogues that ran between her and the president, it was finally decided that USA would also hold the festivals of India. With the event finally starting in the USA was born the festivals of India. So from 1982, when the grounds were laid until 1985, a massive planning was done between the two countries. And finally, the 1985-86 saw two landmark festivals organized internationally by India. One Festival of India was organized in France, in the capital, Paris. The festival began on the 7th of June, 1985, and in the same year, the festival took shape in Washington, D.C., the capital of United States. This was the 13th June, 1985. So, the festivals of India began in two important countries both very good tourist generating regions and of course the regions that could afford a travel to a country like India. Now let us understand why the event first of all is organized in foreign countries. So it is important to understand the logic and the objectives of organizing an event of this scale. As I had already said earlier at the beginning of the session that the perception of India in the eyes of people who are not Indians was India was seen as the region of snake charmers, India was seen as the region of beggars, India was seen as only having the Taj and nothing else. So it was very important to change this perception about India so that people received India not just as a country with beggars and snake charmers and Taj, but also looked at the vast richness of our country. So to change the existing perceptions about India in certain key countries, which are important partners for India internationally was a very important thing to happen. That is why it was essential to organize or showcase India as a cultural destination in these countries by not calling the people to the country, but by taking a little bit of India to their country so that they would gain a curiosity to see India in its vastness. 
The second logic for holding this event at a foreign destination was to promote rehabilitation of Indian personality with the common purpose to create awareness of India's rich cultural heritage, the Indian personality. So the Indian personality had to be a strong nation which looked forward to modernization, a nation which had a personality of strong values, of strong customs, of strong traditions, of strong beliefs, but at the same time prepared to accept modernization. And finally, the logic for holding the event was to present India through Indian eyes, so as to change perception about India away from the established stereotypes of the colonial past. So it was essential that Indians expressed themselves through their display of arts, through the display of culture, through the display of the performing arts in front of the foreigners so that the stereotypes of what India was in their eyes could be broken and the chain could be finally removed. The chain that had stereotyped India as a particular nation with no specializations. This had to change. The fourth logic to organize an event of this scale at a foreign destination was to present an Indian personality on the international cultural arena by introducing contemporary development in various spheres of modern India. So the contemporary development apart from culture, development in terms of space research, development in terms of scientific developments that were taking place in the country was also very important that it be displayed so that India could be understood better by the foreigners. And finally, the festival was organized to generate an appropriate climate of goodwill and understanding for natural exchange in different spheres, including technology, commerce and tourism. So let us look at how the planning and organization of the entire festival took place. So today, the Ministry of Culture, Government of India is essentially responsible for organizing the event. Way back when the event began, the HRD, the Human Resource Development Ministry was responsible because culture was a department in the HRD division. But today, Ministry of Culture looks after the organization of the Festival of India abroad. So a Festivals of India cell, popularly known as FOI, was the cell within the Ministry of Culture responsible for organizing the event. Now the Festival of India cell divided its work into two main headings. First, the process that it had to carry out in India. And second, the process that had to be carried out abroad, wherever the festival was being organized. Of course, within India, the process involved coordinating with the artisans. That means selecting the artists who were finally going to travel abroad to display their unique talents. So for this, the FOI issues a circular to invite artists to submit their proposals. Now, artists from India, from all over India, are invited under seven categories. Art Artists who are experts in classical and traditional dance forms. Artists who are involved in the modern, experimental and contemporary dance forms. Classical music, semi-classical, light and modern music. Artists who excel in theatre, the folk artists. And of course, a team that would organise the exhibitions in the foreign countries. The proposals are reviewed and the selected list is declared. And once the selected list is declared, the participants are invited to finally come in and submit their documents so as to prepare them to travel abroad. At the same time, in within India, it was very important to have links with supporting agencies. The supporting agencies could be autonomous bodies, organizations working towards the growth of culture and promoting classical dance forms or theatres, private institutions who probably have their exhibits or museums or centres where they promote Indian culture, the NGOs, the universities for their diverse information and individuals who may have talents of their own and may not be attached to any of the above institutions. Now the Indian mission abroad, now when it comes to organizing the festival of this scale in a foreign nation, 
the Indian Mission Abroad becomes the nodal implementing agency. Now, the Indian Mission Abroad communicates with the various teams in the foreign country who would be coordinating for organizing an event of this scale. Now, the achievements and limitations. Now, an event of this scale, of course, involves a huge amount of budget. It involves various aspects, right from contacting the artists, to finalizing their lists, to organizing the tours so that they travel to the foreign country, arranging for their stay, arranging for the other essential requirements by the artists when they visit a foreign nation. At the same time, the arrangements in the foreign country as to where the event would be organized, as to where the culture would be showcased, the various stages, museums, art galleries have to be contacted. And this, of course, is a huge challenge. But the brighter side is that over the years, the festival has gained immense popularity in each country where it was showcased. Participation by citizens of the host country is extremely encouraging, where they come in large numbers to look at the presentations given by the artists of India. The extensive media coverage is another encouragement and another achievement by the Festival of India. The festival is a huge success which can be displayed from the various newspapers, from the various articles, from the various magazines, which have highlighted the impact created by the festival in the foreign countries. And the third major achievement that it has helped build international linkages between various institutions in India with those of the host countries. So mutual collaborations, not just during the tenure of the festival, but even outside the tenure of the festival is an important thing to happen. And of course, the Indian artists gained this through the festival, where they were not just, while being a part of the festival, of course, they saw a huge success in whatever they presented but at the same time, even after the festivals, they were continuously contacted by the foreigners so that they could once again visit the country. It may not be under the umbrella of the festival, but to showcase their talents in the countries. The festival propagated the publication of numerous books on various aspects of India and in the enrichment of literature on the culture of the country, not just within the country, but of course, more importantly, in the eyes of the foreign nations. It stimulates interest in Indian art and culture internationally. It has popularized Indian folk traditions world over. So India, which was initially known only for its monuments or for its Taj, for its beggars, through the festival, the popularity was gained by the folk tradition of India. And a lot of interest was shown by foreigners to witness these unique, colorful and rich traditions that India has. It has led to the exchange of ideas and values through the various seminars, workshops, and exhibitions that are a part of the events. So apart from the cultural dynamics of the Festival of India, a lot of interactions in terms of stimulating talks through seminars and conferences were also organized, which was a huge success and a great achievement for India. Cultural exchanges also directly enhances the development of commerce and trade from which, of course, our nation has gained. So when we have cultural exchanges, of course, it leads to commerce and trade because there is a better understanding amongst two different cultures. And this understanding, of course, brings a closer tie between the two nations. One of the most encouraging outcomes of the festival is the boost in inbound traffic to India as tourists want to witness and experience firsthand the dynamism of India. So just showcasing India through the festival was not enough. The people of the foreign countries were encouraged and were eager, were curious to learn more about India. And thus, this festival gave a huge, huge impetus to the inbound traffic to India. Now, within the nation, within the country, it inculcated a revival of pride in the Indians and stimulated the conservation and protection of our cultural heritage. 
Now, of course, we also have to look at the limitations that the festival has. You can see the barriers for organizing this kind of a festival. And the first one is that the event requires a high amount of revenue for arranging for the accommodation, travel and other necessary arrangements for the selected organizing staff, participants and artisans. So revenue generation is a huge challenge and sometimes poses a barrier. Apart from looking after the people who are going to visit the foreign country, the cost of transportation of materials required for staging the event is very high. The infrastructure needed for organizing this event had to be carried from India. Various museum displays had to be taken from India and had to be protected at the same time. So the cost of transportation definitely for these fragile items was very high. Then it requires time taking communications and negotiations with the host country for hiring space on a large scale and for a substantial period of time. Since the festival it takes place over a period of time, it's not just a matter of a few days or one or two weeks, hiring space becomes another challenge. And of course, raising the funds for organizing an important festival of this level is in itself a difficult issue and you have to really hunt for the funds from where it is going to be generated and this may sometimes be a problem. A huge amount of money is also required for printing and publicity. Publicity, of course, not in India but in foreign countries so that more and more people visit the various exhibitions, the various concerts, the various programs that are organized during the Festival of India. Now, since the event is held in different countries every year, the country where the Festival of India takes place changes every year, it is a challenge to organize low-cost activities on a sustained basis. And finally, a feedback mechanism to audit the success of the event has really not been sufficient. As a result, the immediate benefits that India gains from organizing this event cannot be witnessed. It takes some time to understand the final result of the festival. Now, these are some of the pictures of the various successful stories. You can see some of the highlights from different countries. You can see I have highlighted pictures from United Kingdom, the pictures from Switzerland where the event was organized, from various other countries where the event was very successfully organized by India. And finally, to sum up the session, what exactly the session has taught us? Festivals of India promotes India's living and composite culture very successfully. So, Festivals of India, though saw a short break from 2005 to 2013, the festival was not organized because India was losing out somewhere, it revived in the year 2013. And since 2013, we have not look back. Model developed by India contributes in international cultural exchanges and thus many other countries have also adopted this particular concept and have organized their own festivals in different places. Such festivals prominently landmarked India on the cultural map of the world. Before independence, India was nowhere on the cultural map of the world. Even post-independent, bringing India to actually what it deserves was a huge challenge. But the festival has done just this. The festival played a crucial role in changing the perception of India world over. India in the modern circumstance, in the modern scenario. At the same time, holding on to its culture was definitely the highlight of such festivals. Another feature of the festival that it is a promotional event and this has created a desire for many foreigners to visit India for a unique tourism experience as I've already shared with you earlier in the session. It gave innumerable artists to gain international platform and recognition which otherwise would just not have been possible. So the artists has really really gained a lot from the festivals of India. So overall, the Festival of India has been a very successful program right from the time when it was conceived till today and it will definitely see more progresses and more successes in the futures to come. In the recent years, such festivals are organized not just in a single country but jointly in sometimes more than two countries in the same year. For example, in the year 1918, the festival was simultaneously organized in Switzerland and in Tunisia and in both the nations it was a huge success. 
So in the forthcoming years too, this festival which was initially started in just one or two nations will be run in more than two nations in the same year. So by such efforts, of course, the international inbound tourists to India will see a growth. With this, we can sum up that a festival of this nature has really given a huge, huge impetus to India as an international tourist destination and will continue giving in the times to come. Thank you.